Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, hey everybody, Zach here, the White River Fly Shop in Bass Pro in Tawasson. Um, Friday Night Flies is back. It's about time everybody got back on it. Uh, not just me anymore, so I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Uh, so we got some pretty crazy weather right now. This is giant river they're calling it of uh, cold weather that's coming across the Pacific and it's just dumping snow up in Whistler. Um, luckily the Pemby boys haven't been hit too hard yet uh, but it's bringing some crazy uh, rain and winds and all this kind of stuff so this has got me thinking about steelhead. Uh, a little early yet for us but it's uh, you can never be too prepared. Um, so I'm gonna rock out a steelhead fly for you guys tonight. Um, so it's a steelhead Spratly. I've been kind of messing around with uh, some cool materials from Superfly. Um, I've got a chartreuse ring net pheasant skin, which is kind of cool. Um, I've been thinking about something for this for a while now, so finally using it. I've even got uh, some polar bear that a uh, customer brought in for me. This is some old stuff. When he bought it from Bob's Sporting Goods, it was $1.25 for this pack, so um, that's how old it is, which is kind of cool. So finally found a pattern that's kind of worthy of using some of these materials. Um, so I've been doing them up in a couple different colors, uh, black and green, black pink, black blue. Um, I'll show you once we go down here what they look like, and uh, it's a pretty cool fly. I can't wait to fish it, so let's uh, head on down and check it out. All right, guys, so here it is, the uh, Steelhead Spratly. Um, so this is the green chartreuse and black version that I've done. Um, this one's got actually pheasant on the top here. This is um, kind of a nice long pheasant rump feather, which I've kind of selected one there off that skin. Um, these are dyed chartreuse, uh, available from Superfly. It's a really nice looking bird. Um, I've had it for a while now and just been looking at it thinking, what the heck am I going to do with this thing? So that's one option that I've done. I've done a pink and black version as well. So this one I'm using the, um, <clears throat> obviously pink, but not pheasant. I'm using a uh, hot pink squirrel tail. Um, also from Superfly, which is nice, nice fibers to work with. They're nice and long. And the final one I've got here, so I've done a few variations as you can see. This is the Dr. Blue and Black, which is kind of a snazzy looking one. So that's just a fox tail um, wing on top. So really fun to play around with. You can experiment with different materials and such. So we're going to do the green version today. So let's just pop the hook in the vise. So this is a TMC 7999 hook, um, size 2, and so we're going to start by putting on a little tag. So I've got some Danville 210 in fluorescent green, chartreuse, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to start this right at the hook point. I'm just going to take a few turns back, trim away the excess, and I'm just going to go over that just a couple times just to build up a little hot spot. Just really build up that nice green color. There we go. I'm just going to do a couple spiral wraps there. I'm just going to reinforce this with some Solar Res Ultra Thrin here. You can use super glue if you like to. It dries almost as quick. Beauty of the UV products. It's done. So there we go. So now I can unwrap a little bit. And now I'm going to add a little tail. So like I said, I had a customer come in one day, gave me some polar bear. <laughs> this is some pretty cool stuff. As you can see, $1.25 back in the day. It definitely doesn't go for that much anymore, if you can even find it. So I'm just going to section myself off just a little bit here. Don't need much. I'm trying to savor this stuff as long as possible. So I'm just going to kind of roughly stack the fibers just so they're kind of aligned. And once I've kind of got them where I want, I'll kind of let's see, let's line, line. I'll just give them a little bit of a pull and let some fibers go just to have a little bit of taper. So there we go. So my tail, I don't like I said, I don't want it to be too long, just a little bit past the uh, the end of the hook there. Got some a little long there. There we go. Something like so. You can go shorter as long as you like. 
And this I'm just going to wrap back. And this is a return bend hook here. So you can see right there. So I'm going to trim that right at that bend just to kind of fill in that gap. And you'll see I'm just going to start layering materials in there. And that's going to be it for my chartreuse thread. I'm just going to do a little whip finish. Now, I've got some, what is this one? It's uh, 70 Danville, 6 aught thread in black. I'm going to start that right at the front here. I'm going to close that off. I have been having trouble with this thread breaking on me. So this may be the time when you guys actually get to see me break my thread. So I'm just going to take that back. It doesn't have to be tight. So we got our little tag there. Now we're going to add a little butt section. So I don't have any floss, but I do have some Antron yarn in fluorescent yellow. This is stuff from Superfly. A little tip with this stuff. Same with your, your yarn as well. It's a little scraggly. Just lick it. Then you can trim it off nice and small. Keeps everything kind of together. Let's see if I can get this here. So I'm going to have a little... The tag section here, about the same size as that, or a little butt section, just about the same size as that tag. So just a couple turns here. I'm just going to get that kind of going where I want it. Just a couple nice tight wraps here. Helps if you don't let go of it. Alright, so there we go. Just a couple nice tight turns, overlapping slightly. Tie that off, nice and tight. Couple wraps in front. Now I've got a piece of, so we're gonna put in our rib, which is just some uni French oval, medium size, this is gold. I was doing this, uh, first one I did in silver, Brad said try it in gold, so I did. And it actually turned out really nice, I was really happy with it. So this, I've got the end of my gold wire basically right where that return ends. We can basically go in, up just to kind of, again, fill in that gap. And now we're going to add a little bit of weight to this fly. So I'm going to put in some 0.25 lead wire, just a couple turns. So again, right where that bend is, just to kind of fill in that gap. I'm going to take two turns, then two or three over top on the return. And we're just going to break that off. Don't mind my hands there. there we go. Just helicopter that guy off. I'm just going to build up a little bit of a taper for the thread here. Let's also prevent it from sliding. Just kind of back and forth. Not entirely necessary. You can do this as an unweighted fly as well. It's all up to you. This is where my thread is usually broken. Whew, out of the woods. Doesn't mean it's not going to break at the top. So there we go. Just going to take my thread back. And now we're going to dub in our body. So I've got a Superfly seal fur dubbing assortment here. Um, this is the Attractor. They also have a natural. You can use either because we're just using the black. Um, it's a nice little color here. Easy stuff to work with. So I'm just going to dub that somewhat loosely onto my thread. And as we start to wrap this, we can kind of pull down on it and we can tighten those wraps up which is kind of nice. So we're just going to keep everything fairly even, if we can. That lead at the front is going to give us a little bit of a taper, which is kind of nice. So I'm just going to keep adding some more here. This is a pretty easy pattern to tie, especially if you're wanting to get into these kind of old school looking steelhead flies and salmon flies. This one's a good introductory for you. This seal fur dubbing is Buggy. I love it. Probably going to see me start using this a little bit more in some flies. There we go. Just keep going. Doesn't have to be perfect. You've heard me say it time and time again. The fish don't care. And if they do, we're all in trouble. So there we go. We're at the red lead now. 
a little bit more. We're going to end our dubbing just in front of the lead. And that's where we're going to tie in our throat and our wing. Just make sure it's all covered up. Just like so. That looks pretty good to me. If you've got any really long ones, kind of just pull them out of there. You can even trim them away if you like. Whatever you like. So I'm going to take a full turn of the oval wire at the back. I'm going to segment it up and just barber pull it. Get three, four, almost five turns there. I'm going to finish this off right on top. Just to keep everything nice and smooth, I'm going to tie that about the length of my head. So you can see, and I'm just going to tie that in. Just like so. So now I'm going to invert my vise. We're going to tie in the throat. So for the throat, I'm just using some strong guinea chartreuse. <clears throat> so I've got a feather that I've kind of prepared here. I'm just going to section off a chunk, kind of a, roughly align the tips if I can. Like so, pull them off. And the throat length is going to be about the length of the, the dubbing there. So I'm just going to tie that in with a little pinching loop. So I just kind of pinch it all on top. I do a loose wrap and I pull straight down as I pinch everything together. And this kind of keeps everything in place. And I'm just going to spread them out, those fibers out with my finger there, your nail, kind of like so. And then we kind of lock this down and we can trim that away about the length of our head. And we're just going to tidy that up just a little bit. Take our thread back and now we're going to build our wing. So we have an underwing and an overwing. So the underwing on this is just some superfly foxtail in black. You're going to go fairly sparse with this. You don't need to go too crazy. Just a little bit. This, I like to take out a little bit of the under fur. You don't really have to. You can take the guard hairs out if you like as, as well. I'm going to keep them in. And for this, the guard hairs are going to be, I'm, I'm judging by the main part, not so much the guard hairs, they're always going to be a little bit longer. They have a little bit of movement, which is kind of nice. So the actual main part, <clears throat> I'm going to tie it in right to that uh, tag that we put in. So again, I'm going to do a pinching loop. So I'm going to pinch everything on top, do a nice loose wrap. I'm going to pull straight down. And just secure that in place. Make sure it's sitting right on top. Again, just going to kind of cut that on a little bit of an angle just to help form the head here. Just tidy that up <clears throat> just a little bit. Sorry, my voice is kind of going, just kind of getting over this flu that's a cough and it's kind of going around. So there we go. So that's our underwing there. And now our overwing, like I said, is just one of those rump feathers from that pheasant skin. So I'm just going to kind of separate a few fibers here. Don't need to use all of them. This is where you can make it as sparse or as heavy dressed as you like. I like to be a little bit sparser. Just there is kind of an accent wing. So I'm just going to kind of separate that as you would like a schloppen feather or any other kind of hackle that you're going to tie in. And this I'm just going to lay on top. And I want the length to be, again, about to where that tag is. So I'm just going to kind of, one more pinching loop. So just pinch everything together. And then pull straight down on it. Again, we're just going to make sure that everything's sitting nice and on top. Kind of like so. Just going to secure that in. Trim away the excess. Tidy that up. Now we got one more material in here. I'm sticking with a very natural material list on this one. Um, I was actually thinking about doing some... Uh, peacock ice dubbing for this next part, which you can definitely experiment with. But I'm going to use some peacock. This is that bright green that I've used before. So it's a dyed peacock. I'm just going to take two strands, trim away the tip sections because those spots are very brittle. I'm going to tie that in on my side. And I'm just going to wind those two together. So just create a nice little head here, nice little collar. 
This bright green really stands out. Should swim really well in the water as well. Let's tie those guys off. Now you can either trim them away. If you want a nice clean break, you're going to pull down on your thread slightly. And you're just going to pull them off. A little trick from Davey McPhail that I've learned there. I'm sure you guys have seen all his videos as well. Got a couple straggler pieces of something here. And now we're just going to build up a nice little black head. So nothing too crazy. <clears throat> and we're going to whip finish. You don't have to, but I'm going to throw in two whip finishes. Not entirely necessary. You can put on some head cements or use what I'm going to do. Which is just some more of this uh, Solar Res Ultra Thin. This is kind of my new head cement. I love this stuff. It goes on easy. It's got the applicator brush. Just rotate that all the way around. Cure it up. And there you have it. Steelhead Spratly. So this one I find that tail is maybe a smidge long. Not the end of the world. I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm sure, that, like I said, fish don't care. <clears throat> so I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, let's head on up and sign out. All right, guys, Steelhead Spratly, pretty easy, uh, kind of old school looking fly, which is kind of cool. Um, some modern twists and new materials and stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, goes together pretty easy. Um, yeah, if you don't have polar bear, <laughs> which not a lot of people do, uh, it's hard material to get. You definitely substitute bucktail um, for it, which is a, a good substitute. You also got um, What's the other one? Uh, Icelandic sheep, which uh, we have here at the shop uh, from Superfly. It's a pretty nice material. Uh, great for saltwater streamers as well. It's really, really cool. Um, maybe I'll start messing around with that a little bit more for you guys too and some, uh, maybe some bull trout patterns. We'll, we'll see what I can dig up. Um, but yeah, so again, super easy pattern. Um, goes together with a bunch of different materials, especially for that wing. Like say you can use fox, you can use squirrel tail, you can use uh, you know, pheasant rump, you can use whatever you want. It's, it's kind of a good one to build on and a good starting point. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, stay warm out there. This weather is crazy right now. Uh, Jordan and I are going to go brave the waters tomorrow and see what we can find up in Squamish. Hopefully the rivers aren't too high. Um, so yeah, let us know what you guys think. Give us a follow on Facebook. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next week.